Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. The Chinese Communist Party is facing global irrelevance alongside a massive blow to its economy right now. Now this has to do with semiconductors, computer chips. Without modern generation chips, the Chinese Communist Party risks falling generations behind the rest of the world. And without the chips, the CCP's ambitions to build a high-tech economy, well, they're all going to come crashing down. Let me explain it. Now, imagine a military from the 1980s trying to fight against a military with current generation weapons. On the tech front, imagine an Apple iPhone from 2008 on the market trying to compete with an iPhone made today. If a tech company falls behind even a couple generations, it cannot compete on the market. Imagine, for example, someone trying to compete with a, uh, a phone from, you know, five, ten years ago. It's irrelevant. According to even the CCP itself, though, China doesn't just risk falling behind a couple generations. It risks something significantly greater. Now, look, normally, if the CCP was facing an avoidable crisis, it would try to cover it up. It would not allow the Chinese media especially to report it. Doing otherwise would be a show of weakness, especially when the global image it tries to project is that of a high-tech, advanced, you know, developed society, tall buildings, neon lights, futuristic ambitions. But that's not what's happening. Chinese media right now are reporting on something else. In fact, one of them com- reported on comments from Gerald Yin. He's the CEO of Advanced Microfabrication Equipment China. That's one of the companies in this field. He said export controls on U.S. chips to China could cause the local test, the local tech industry to fall, quote, at least five generations behind. Now, the key words there are at least five generations would be a conservative estimate. But saying any longer than that, well, that would demonstrate how far behind the world the CCP actually is. But he added, quote, We can't accept this. The CCP's top diplomat, Wang Yi, made similar statements recently as well. He pulled out a common CCP line against the United States, framing U.S. concerns over Chinese hostility as America fearing the so-called rise of China. Wang Yi framed the moves against Chinese chips, saying, The U.S. tears open its pretense of fair competition and coerces other countries to engage in unilateral protectionism against China. Notably, the CCP does that to us, you know, in terms of everything they do, but that's beside the point. But this relates to a move from the Biden administration that actually few people saw coming. In October of last year, President Joe Biden put new restrictions in place on the Chinese semiconductor industry. This affected not only the sale of high-tech chips to China, but also the equipment used to manufacture those chips. Now, the issue for China, it cannot make these chips by itself. It needs it for its military equipment, needs it for computers, needs it for cell phones. It cannot make it itself. And if it can't even buy the chips at scale, then its entire tech industry, its military ambitions, even the AI technology, all of it comes to a screeching halt. And then, well, just a few days ago, Biden issued an executive order that restricts U.S. investment in key technologies for, quote, countries of concern. And there's only a few of those. It says that allowing technology to go to China or other hostile countries, they don't name China by name, but it's it's between the lines. They say it significantly enhances their ability to conduct activities that threaten the national security of the United States. He noted that semiconductors and other sensitive electronics are key to military dominance. So this is semiconductors and a lot of other high tech as well. He wrote, quote, I therefore find that advancement by countries of of concern and sensitive technologies and products critical for the U.S. military, intelligence, surveillance, or cyber-enabled capabilities of such countries constitutes an unusual an extraordinary threat to the national security of the United States, which has its source in whole or substantial part outside the United States, and that certain United States investment risks exacerbating this threat. I hereby declare 
a national emergency to deal with this threat. Now, why is this important? Well, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace wrote last year that if these restrictions are in place long enough against Chinese chips, the CCP is going to fall far enough behind on technology in terms of generations that, quote, they simply won't be able to catch up. In other words, for the CCP's high-tech ambitions and for its dreams of a military and an economy as well that can actually overcome the U.S., this would be the end. It states, These restrictions amount to the single most substantial move by the U.S. government to date in its quest to undermine Chinese technology capabilities. Now remember, a bit of context on this. Former President Donald Trump actually did something similar to China, but his move was actually significantly more limited. It was actually only temporary as well. In May of 2019, Trump put chip restrictions on Chinese telecom company Huawei. He was only doing this for leverage on negotiations, though. It was right ahead of the COVID lockdowns at a time when Trump was still looking to strike a deal with the CCP, trade deal. Even with just restrictions on chips for Huawei, though, analysts at the time noted the ripple effect they could have on the Chinese economy and even the global economy. He let them feel a brief moment of pain. But Trump only kept them in place for a little bit. But it was a reminder to the CCP that its high-tech industry was still dependent on the United States and that it could all be taken away. When Biden brought back the chip restrictions, Many analysts thought it would be similar to Trump's move, just something temporary. Although, you know, notably it was much broader from the get-go. But now, a year later, or close to a year later, not only are those restrictions still in place, Biden is bringing the manufacturing back home. He's institutionalizing the taking away of this tech from China. The chips are now about American jobs, American manufacturing. Watch. We're back. America's back. We're going to lead the world. There's everything we're talking about in the Chips and Science Act is going to be made in America, produced made in America, create thousands of good paying jobs, investing literally hundreds of billions of dollars. We used to lead the world in semiconductors and computer chips. We're going to do it again. And I'm more optimistic about America's prospects than I've ever been in my whole career. Now, for the CCP, this is a crippling blow. This is the Biden equivalent to the five-finger death punch. The Chinese regime has been going all in for decades, trying to build a high-tech economy. This has all been framed around competition and unconventional war with the United States. They say it openly in China. It ties deeply to the regime's unrestricted warfare programs, concepts of war meant to defeat the United States using methods that avoid direct military conflict, at least in the in, you know, initial part of it. On the high-tech front, the CCP slogan is surpass you at the turning point. And the idea of that slogan is that it's difficult to compete on the market against an existing product. If you want to compete, you have to look ahead at the next big development, the next big turning point. And because of that, the CCP had two programs. One was Project 863, the other was China 2030. These laid out key areas of development, you know, new materials, artificial intelligence, and various other forms of high technology. The CCP fed the development of these technologies using every underhanded method in the book. Well, that's all for YouTube because YouTube likes to ban us. So join us on Epic TV, EPOCHTV.com. We have tons of great content, other shows, documentaries, my special features, which YouTube will give me a strike for if I play it here. Uh, we recently got the unreleased, let's call it J6 footage. And we have a special feature detailing what's not been shown to the public. I cannot show you that on YouTube. You have to come to Epic TV where we actually have protections on free speech to watch it. That being said, we have a lot of great content still in line. We're talking about the agenda behind the woke movement, the real nature of what we're seeing with Skittles now being targeted, the partnership with GLAAD, uh, Best Buy being targeted with the anti-woke boycotts. What is wokeism, in fact? We'll discuss all of this in detail. Also, Donald Trump is facing new charges, yes, again. 
And there's some weird stuff with it. Yes, again, including, for example, the uh, officials in Georgia accidentally publishing and then deleting the announcement of the charges. Uh, some really wild stuff. We'll be explaining what's really happening with it. And again, that's on Epic TV, EPOCHTV.com. Link in the description. I'll see you there. People from 160 countries illegally cross the U.S.-Mexico border and get themselves up to Border Patrol. But what about the ones who evade Border Patrol? These are known as the gotaways. You can safely assume that anybody that went through the extra effort to avoid U.S. Border Patrol was not an asylum seeker by default. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but somewhere down the road, if somebody rapes and kills somebody, and we find out that they came through here on my watch, that's unacceptable. These men had surrounded my house. They were banging on my back door. They were banging on my front door. I can't understand it unless you're out here seeing it every day. 21 dead bodies on the road. Code 3 response. Is it wrong to ask people to come to your front door of your home? Then why would it be wrong to ask people to come to the front door of our nation? Their primary goal is to circumvent the checkpoints, go undetected. People that do not want to surrender, those are going to be the potential terrorists, the criminals, the real threat to the U.S. We were hoping the federal government would step in and do something, but they didn't. We have no clue who they are or where they're going. That's the scary part. 